in 2 Peter today. We finished 1 Peter last, last week, and we're going to be in 2 Peter today. How many remember, I know I'm going to age myself here, be all that you can be. Yes, in the Army. You do remember that, John. I'm, I'm glad. I didn't know if that would go over your head. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Yeah, be all that you can be in the army. <laughs> it was an invitation for men and women to come and make something out of their lives, right? It was, uh, you know, it was like the old uh, advertisement, Uncle Sam wants you, right? <laughs> this was a little bit more enticing. Be all that you can be, right? See the world, all these things, come and serve. <laughs> I grew up singing, and then when I was teaching, singing, I'm in the Lord's army. Remember? Yes, sir, we would say, right? <laughs> I may never march in the infantry, ride in the cavalry, but I'm in the Lord's army. <laughs> yes, oh yeah, I forgot that line. <laughs> Shoot the artillery, right? But contrary to popular belief, living the Christian life is not boring. Amen? It's the most exciting life you could ever live. That's right. That's right. Living for Jesus. The sky's the limit, right? <laughs> what God can do. I mean, people join the military to serve and to uh, protect their nation. When we become part of the Lord's army, amen, we have an opportunity to serve as well. And we come under the protection of the Lord Jesus, amen? amen. Serving the Lord, amen? Christianity provides an opportunity not just to see the world, but to change the world because of Christ in us, amen? Amen. amen. But the only limitation that we have as believers is us. <laughs> it's you. It's me. It's the only limitation that we have here. As Paul told the Ephesians, and we went there earlier in March, we were there. He can do immeasurably more than we ask or think. Exceedingly, abundantly, the King James says in Ephesians, more than we could ask or even think or imagine. God can do more in us. Amen? So starting in chapter 1 of 2 Peter, beginning with verse 1. You know, I love to go verse by verse. Amen. It says, Simon Peter, a servant and apostle of Jesus Christ, to those who through the righteousness of our God and Savior, Jesus Christ, have received a faith as precious as ours. Grace and peace be yours in abundance. Through the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. His divine power has given us everything we need for a godly life through our knowledge of him. Who called us by his own glory and goodness. Through these he has given us his very great and precious promises so that through them you may participate in the divine nature, having escaped the corruption in the world caused by evil desires. For this very reason, make every effort to add to your faith goodness, to your goodness knowledge, to the, and to knowledge self-control and to self-control, perseverance, and to perseverance, godliness, and to godliness, mutual affection, and to mutual affection, love. For if you possess these qualities in increasing measure, they will keep you from being ineffective and unproductive in your knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. But whoever does not have them is nearsighted and blind, forgetting that 
they have been cleansed from their past sin. Therefore, my brothers and sisters, make every effort to confirm your calling and election. For if you do these things, you will never stumble, and you will receive a rich welcome into the eternal kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus, we thank you for your word. It is rich and it is powerful. It accomplishes, oh God, what it sets forth to do. And Lord, we pray that your word, God, as we digest it today, as we look into your word, God, I pray that our hungry hearts will be filled with more of you. Father, that our knowledge will increase in you, Lord, and that our willingness would yield to you, God, that you would have your way in our hearts and in our lives. Father, that you would quicken us, that you would awaken us, that you would stir within us a desire to know you more, to see your will accomplished, God, we pray. In our lives, Lord, and in the lives of those around us, we pray. We look to you, Lord Jesus. We desperately cry out to you, O oh God, that we might hear from you, receive from your word the nourishment that our spirit needs, we pray. In Jesus' precious name, we ask it. Amen and amen. Thank the Lord. You know, in contrast to the army and being all that we can be, a man stood one day in church and he gave his testimony. And he said, I had been begging for years. He said, and there I was in the Pennsylvania Depot and I tapped a man on the shoulder and I said, excuse me, mister, do you have any spare change? And the man turned around, revealing his father. <laughs> his very own father was there I'm sure his brow was wrinkled and with concern and care. And he said, Dad, do you recognize me? I'm your son. And he said, yes. He said, I have come. I have looked for you. I have searched for you to give you all that I have. So often as believers, I think we go around as a beggar just begging for change. When God has so much more, God has given us everything that we need. Everything, we see it here in our text. He has given us everything we need. Amen. Everything for this life and the next, praise God. As Christians, it's amazing how so little we can survive on Imagine, my husband talked about years ago, what if we had a green dot on our forehead when we came to the Lord and it glowed and we, people would say, oh, they're a believer, I can see it. <laughs> what if it should show our spiritual belly? How much have you eaten from the word of God this week? Some of us are anemic. If we were to do a spiritual blood test, where would your levels be? <laughs> Some, it's amazing how little we survive on when God has so much for us. A banquet set before us every day, the word of God. Yes. Some of you are relieved we don't have that spiritual blood test here today. But hopefully we can encourage you to dig in. Amen? To dig in and get your fill. Amen? Get your fill. The hardest thing about dieting is knowing that you got to stop. You might not ever get that full feeling for a while, right? That's the hard part. But guess what? When it comes to the Word of God, we can eat our fill of it as much as we want as much as we need. Amen? God doesn't want us to beg for spare change that this world has to offer. He has so 
much more for us. Amen. He offers us a wealth of provision that will help us live our life to the full. To the full, right? As Christ followers, we have everything we need to live a godly life. If you're going to be all that you can be, <laughs> right? We've got to have power. We've got to have power. Look at the introduction to the letter. First of all, look at the phrase, his divine power. <laughs> In verse 3, his divine power. <laughs> Whose power is it? God's power. It's not your strength. We don't go on our strength. We go on his power. What kind of power is it? <laughs> Wonder working power in the blood. Amen. Divine power, right? Divine, meaning it comes from God. He's the source of all of our power. Amen. If that word is dunamis power, all right? And that Strong's Concordance says it's force, and it's miraculous power. It's a miracle itself, amen? That's what God offers, that his divine power, all right? It's opened the door for our salvation, right? That godliness there is drawing us near to him. Devote reverence or attitude, a conduct on our life and in our deeds, right? has given us everything we need for a godly life. <laughs> everything, everything we need. We need to have that attitude. Not, hey, mister, can you spare some change? Hey, God, can you give me? Yeah. No, he has given us everything that we need to live a godly life. So how do we get that knowledge? It says, through his knowledge, right? He's given us everything we need for a godly life through our knowledge of him. Through our knowledge, who called us by his own glory, by his goodness. He called us. That knowledge is a full recognition of God, his plan and his purpose for our lives. Amen. Amen. That power that he bestowed upon us able, enables us to do the deeds he's called us to do, right? If you get a plan from God and you can figure it all out, then guess what? It's probably not from him, <laughs> right? We need God-sized dreams, amen? God-sized dreams so we can live the purpose that God has for us his visible presence, that we could see his glory and his goodness to those who put their trust in him. So how do we get to know God anyways? How do we get to know him? I believe, first of all, it's through his word. Through his word. God the Father revealed himself in Christ. Jesus said that. The disciple said to Jesus, show us the Father, and that will suffice us. Right? Jesus said, I'm with you. You see me, you see the Father. Right? That's what he said to them. But we, and we see that Jesus is revealed in the word of God. We get to know God by getting to know Jesus. Don't we? How do we get to know Jesus? Through the word of God. Amen? Amen. The word was in the beginning, and the word was God, and the word was with God. Amen? The word, right? The gospels are a good place to start there. Amen. What would Jesus do? How would we know unless we know what Jesus would do through his word, right? We find out about his character. We find out about his compassion for those for the underdog, for those the outcasts. He always would reach out to them. His concern for those didn't seem to really uh, be those that just belonged. <laughs> they were the misfits, the island of misfit toys, <laughs> right? Only misfit people. Jesus reached out to them. Jesus crossed all sorts of boundaries. <laughs> 
He touched the leopard. <laughs> Amen. He spoke to the woman he didn't know at the well. Right? We see over and over again he crossed boundaries, social taboos to reach those that were outcast in this world. Right? To those who needed his love the most. You can even look back through the pages of the Old Testament and to know the character and the heart of God. Right? If God never changes which that's what the scripture tells us. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. We can look through the whole word of God to see the character of God. Old Testament and new. Amen. We find that he's the creator. He's so powerful. He's sovereign, right? What he says we will do, right? He loves mankind and he wants fellowship with us. And we see that in his word. He's totally just totally just not you can talk about blind justice and social justice but jesus is totally just <laughs> the same right he judges what is wrong he's compassionate and he cares for the poor and the needy we see that over and over again in the word of god so if you want to know god you need to get into his word amen, amen? if you want to know god like any good relationship, you need some communication. <laughs> right? You remember being in love? You couldn't talk enough. You couldn't tell him enough, right? All that on and on and on, right? Um, you see that. Communication. Just because you're married doesn't mean you don't talk anymore. Boy, you better talk. Yeah. <laughs> Guys, you're dating and that woman can talk and talk. Guess what? She's going to talk and talk some more the rest of your life, right? Yeah. That, we need that communication. Well, prayer is the communication we do with our <clears throat> Lord and Savior. Amen? We cry out to him when we need help. <laughs> we pour out our heart before him. And then we wait for his communication back. Amen. We wait for him to speak to our hearts by his Holy Spirit. We surrender our lives to him. We try to describe the thoughts of our, our mind, our troubled minds. We try and pour them out before him. Feelings are awakened by his presence around us when we pray to him. Oh, what needless pain we bear. We forfeit when we don't go to him, right? Like the hymn says, it's through this exchange of heart and soul when we pour out our heart and we listen to God's heart. Mm -hmm. Oh, that we would hear God's heartbeat. What is it that concerns God? Let him tell us in prayer, right? That's how we get to know God. We get to know him through praise and through worship. <coughs> Through adoration of our God. Amen. Something wonderful happens when we raise our arms and surrender to him. When we exalt his holiness. When we recognize that he is on the throne today. Amen. And yet we can come boldly into his presence. And we worship him with upraised hands. We worship him with songs. Right? New songs, hymns, all the songs. In spiritual songs. When we pray in the spirit. We just, we can get to know him through praise and worship we express our love and our thankfulness our devotion to him and something wonderful happens amen when we turn our eyes upon jesus the things of this earth they just all of a sudden don't seem so important after all amen when we realize that god of the universe is in control amen. our problems are small amen and something wonderful happens when we have that interaction of praise to him we get to know God through his word, through prayer, through praise and worship, and through experience, I believe. We often don't think of this, but one of the best ways to get to know God involves these times. It takes time. It takes time. All these things, through it all, 
Through it all, Sister Joan played. I've learned to trust in Jesus. Hallelujah. I've learned to trust in God. Through it all, through yes. every valley and every mountain top that we have done, traveled with Jesus, we get to know him. Right? We get to know him. Some of you have good uh, fair weather friends, I'll call them. <laughs> And you know they're fun and they're great, and except if you're in a valley. When you go through the valley of the shadow of death, perhaps they're not there. <laughs> you get to know something about your friendship. Yeah, where are they? I thought they were right here. <laughs> I thought it was through thick or thin, we're together, but where do they go, right? Where'd they go, right? But we get to know Jesus by living life with him. We get to know that he's a friend who sticks closer than a brother. Amen. We get to know that, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I'll fear no evil. Why? Because thou art with me. Amen. 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 So something happens over time when we trust God. When we trust God, and for new believers, I would say, to tag along some who've been through these experiences already. Maybe you're like, I don't have those experiences to go on. Will you find a friend who does? <laughs> Amen. There's wisdom in that over the time. Learning about him in his word and in prayer and praise and worship and experience of life. Walking life with them. Right? He gives us promises. Verse 4 says, through these he has given us, what kind of promises? Very great and precious promises exceedingly great promises the king Ver james version says they're precious promises they're costly they're costly how much do they cost god the death of his son <laughs> right no matter how many promises god has made they are yes and amen, amen. right all his promises are yes and amen. 2 Corinthians 1.20, for no matter how many promises God has made, they are yes in Christ. And through him, the amen is spoken to us. Amen. amen. By us to the glory of God. Amen. They're amen. So be it. So be it. Look at these verses require from us we need to have a knowledge of his promises to us how are we going to know his promises <laughs> they're in the book amen the answers are in the text amen the answers are there in the book we can't claim a promise we don't know <laughs> and all the promises in christ are yes and amen Everything that God has declared is available to those who believe. Amen? Like Dawn said, those who believe. What do you need from God? You find it in the Bible. <laughs> find what you need in the Bible and claim it as your own. Write it on a little card. Put it on your mirror. Put it on your dashboard. Put it wherever you need to put it to see that. We can find the promises that we need by embracing, by embracing those promises he's given us. He has given us his very great and precious promises. He promises pardon. Amen. Amen. He promises pardon. In 1 John 1, 9, I will forgive you. In Jeremiah 31, 34, for I will forgive their wickedness and remember their sins no more. Praise God. This is God's promise to those under the new covenant. Amen. 1 John 1, 9, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and will forgive our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. We have that promise to stand upon when the enemy of our soul comes at us and he says, 
well, you're not a very good Christian. Remember on September 9, whatever, whatever? Get behind me, you just look at him and you quote this promise to him. First John 1 John 1.9 says, if we confess our sins, he is faithful to forgive our sins and to purify us from all unrighteousness. Amen. Amen. He promises his presence, hallelujah, that he will be with us. Joshua 1.5 says, as I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will never leave you nor forsake you. That must have encouraged Joshua's heart. He was the new general for the Israeli tribe, amen? And he said, I'll be with you. I'll be with you. And the writer of Hebrews, he brings that promise to us. He brings it to us as believers. In Hebrews 13, 5, God says, never will I leave you. Never will I forsake you. You feeling all alone in this world? <laughs> You just remind yourself of that promise that never will I leave you, never will I forsake you. Amen. 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 Promises his provision. We see his provision over and over again. He will take care of us. Psalms 37, 25, I, the psalmist says, I was young and now I'm old. Yet I have never seen the righteous forsaken or their children begging bread <laughs> that is encouraging amen in this economy the way it is he, he had never seen it philippians 4 19 it says and my god will supply what's it say all of your needs all of your needs according to his glorious riches in christ jesus you could look at the promises over and over again. We see promise after promise of his coming, that he is coming again. Amen. He said, I go to prepare a place for you, and if I go, I will come again and receive you unto myself. Hallelujah. Right? We see those promises over and over again. We've looked at them on Wednesday nights. And, um, as we go through the book of Revelations, the promise of his coming, the promise of his power. Praise God. We see that in Acts over and over again. The promise, and after, even in Joel, and afterward I'll pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and your daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see dreams. Your visions, your old men will see dream, dreams. Amen. And even on my servants, both men and women, hallelujah, I will pour out my spirit on those days. Amen. 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 In Acts 2, 4, and, and you will see, re receive power after the Holy Spirit has come upon you. Amen. To be my witnesses. So we see the promises are there. The word of God is full of promises, precious, costly promises that he has given to us. Amen. We need to know the word, right? There's gold in these pills. <laughs> There's gold in here. Yeah, we need to dig it out. If you're going to be all that you can be, you've got to have a purpose. You've got to have a purpose. What are you here for? We need a purpose. Here's a promise that we've got to get a hold of. We've got to grasp this. He's given us power. And God's power is within us. He's given us that. Because we have God's power, there should be something supernatural within us that sparks the manifestation in the natural world. We see the supernatural, amen? The supernatural, it's revealed by your faith. I got to tell you, when a sermon goes well, I say, well, that wasn't me. <laughs> That's the spirit of God going through me, right? And we realize that that power, that God's power, if he lives in our heart, amen, and God is all powerful, that he can do great and mighty things. He has a purpose amen. and a plan for each of us. He has a calling for you. He has a job for you to do. We see that his power is at work within us. It's revealed in our faith. Wouldn't it be nice if you were, when you got saved, that everything just came automatic? <laughs> Wouldn't that be nice if all of a sudden you just became the, 
goodness was just oozing out of you. <laughs> you were just the sweetest person. Wouldn't that be wonderful if you came and asked the Lord into your heart and you got up and you were just the sweetest sunshine ever and that you had all the knowledge of the word of God and, and then self-control would just take over? Wouldn't that be wonderful? <laughs> And you are automatically able to just persevere no matter what. But the Bible doesn't say that. It says that's up to you. <laughs> that it's up to you. For this very reason, verse 5 says, make every effort. Wait a minute. I thought this was free. <laughs> we got to make every effort. How do we make that? Well, that involves some elbow grease. Making every effort, right? Making every effort. Two. And then he adds all these things. <laughs> to add to your faith goodness, to your goodness knowledge, to your knowledge self-control, to self-control perseverance. That's a hard one. And to perseverance, godliness. And to godliness, mutual affection. And to mutual affection, love. <laughs> right? Make every effort to add these to you. Right? Make every effort the good news is you don't have to do it on your own, though. <laughs> we rely on that God's spirit within us. Paul talks about the fruit of the spirit. It sounds familiar, right? It sounds familiar to these things. In Galatians 5, 22 and 23, he lists those fruits. And then later, just down a few verses in verse 24, it says, Those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the sinful nature with its passions and desires. Since we live by the Spirit, let us also keep in step with the Spirit. <laughs> That's the key right there, to keep in step. <laughs> means you go where they go. <laughs> hey, you get the image of a father's boot marks in the snow and the little child trying to put their little foot in those big holes. <laughs> Keep in step. Follow the Lord Jesus. Right? Verse 8 says, For if you possess these qualities in increasing measure... They will keep you from being ineffective and unproductive in your knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. If you possess these. If you. Remember, we're making every effort to do these, right? The power of God at work in you is supposed to be productive. <laughs> he didn't place his power in you so you could sit still on the pew here <laughs> he put the power of god within you with the spirit of god within you for a purpose none of us want to look back at our lives and say wow i guess i didn't do much with my life right we want to be productive for the kingdom of god amen yes. productive for him Jesus told his disciples, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. Right? For what? And you will be my witnesses, Jesus said. Empowered to live a holy life. Empowered to be his witness. There's a warning in verse 9 there. It says, but if anyone does not have them, he is nearsighted and blind and is forgotten that he has been cleansed from his past sins. It's a warning we need to heed, right? If you're going to be all that you can be, I can tell you with confidence there'll be a peace. There'll be a peace. It says, therefore, my brothers and sisters, the new NIV says, make every effort to confirm your calling and election. For if you do these things, you will never stumble. Never stumble. God has given us his power. He expects us to use that power for his purpose. Amen? 
that power will provide us. We can know beyond a shadow of a doubt. If you go on to verse 11, it will tell us, and you will receive a rich welcome into the eternal kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen? Life now, eternal life, right? Life is good, eternal life is better. Someone wrote a song like that, right? It is. Eternal life is better. Make sure your calling and your election are sure. You're responsible for holding on to what God has given you. We're told numerous times to stand upon the truth, right? To know that by walking in his power, we don't have to doubt our salvation. We have a peace and knowing that God is in control. It's the gift of God, salvation, right? We're saved by grace. That's what grace is. <laughs> it's a gift. God's gift to you. There's danger in falling from grace. There's danger in forgetting where we came from and what God has done in our lives, right? Jesus warned about those who look like Christians but are not. <laughs> In Matthew 7, verse 15, he says, Watch out for false prophets. They come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ferocious wolves. By their fruit, you'll recognize them. Do people pick grapes from thorn bushes or figs from thistles? Likewise, every good tree bears good fruit, and a bad tree bears bad fruit. A good tree cannot bear bad fruit, and a bad tree cannot bear good fruit. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. Thus, by their fruit, you'll recognize them. God's power is at work in you and provides eternal life and the ability to be sure you won't lose it. And you will receive a rich welcome, Peter ends this part of his letter, right? Knowing that he will never leave you and never forsake you. The promises of God promises of God. He promises that greater things than these will you do in Mark 17. He says that. Greater things will you do than these. How? By the power he gives us. John 14, 12, I tell you the truth. Anyone who has faith in me will do what I have been doing. He'll do even greater than these because I am going to the Father and I will do whatever you ask in my name so that the Son may bring glory to the Father. You may ask me for anything in my name, and I will do it. We can do the miraculous only because of the power that he's given us. The power that he has given us. In the book of Acts, we see a story about Simon, the sorcerer, who came to the disciples. He saw the mighty things that they did, and he offered to buy it. <coughs> he offered to buy it. We can't buy the power of God, can we? It didn't go well for Simon. <laughs> yeah, there's no price on that gift. It comes from surrendering our hearts and our lives to him. Peter says, for this very reason, make every effort to add to your faith, goodness, to your goodness. He goes on and on to be able to walk in the power that God has given us. Amen. Because he's given us very precious promises. Amen. Very precious. Lord Jesus, as we look, we've looked in your word, Lord, we've received much to chew on there, Lord. Father, I pray you would help us to make every effort. Lord, if there are those here today who don't feel victorious in their walk with you, they're struggling, God, I pray you would remind them of your promises, never to leave them, not to, not to put out the smoldering coal, Lord, 
you're desirous to pull us all close. Father, I pray you would encourage hearts today. Some are in the valleys of life, Lord, and the road is hard. Remind them, oh God, that you're there for them. Father, I pray you would help us as a church that we would daily be in your word. Lord, give us such an insatiable hunger, God, for your word. To know you more, to read of those precious promises, Lord, to add to our faith, goodness, patience. Lord, all those fruits of the Spirit, Lord, may they be evident in us, I pray. Pour in your power, Lord. Pour in your Holy Spirit, I pray. Help us, Lord, to find your plan and your purpose for each of our lives, we pray. May we walk in newness of life, Lord God, we pray. Jesus, we live in a day and age where we need to see your touch. We've heard of your fame. We stand in awe of your deeds, O oh Lord. Renew them in our times, in our days. Make them known. Lord, we pray that along with Habakkuk, in our days, make them known. Lord, help us to operate in the gifts and the fruits of the Spirit, I pray. Lord, help us be world changers, even if it's just our own world that we change. Help us, oh God, we pray. Stir our hearts, Lord Jesus. Don't, Lord, as we leave this place, may your word go with us. I pray in Jesus' precious name. Amen and amen. God bless you. Be in the word. Amen. Mm -hmm.